Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now. Here I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of the last three brain cells, host between Taramina's on Oriented with Television. Like to welcome those watching on a local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriented with Television. A lot to talk about this week here, obviously. Um, we're going to talk um, football, obviously. New coach over at Stony Creek. We're going to talk about that. Um, also, a new, um, we're going to talk about a lot of boys basketball. What is wrong with Clarkston? I mean, we're going to bring that up. And then, and then also, what is going on um, in girls basketball? Um, obviously, um, a, lot of, a lot of surprises going around the league, obviously. So, Let's go to our main story here. Of course, we're going to go into football, obviously. Um, the first one here is um, at Stony Creek, of course. Um, Rick Powell is na- has been named the new head coach at Stony Creek. Um, he takes over for Nick Merlo. Um, Merlo left Stony Creek to become the offensive coordinator at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, as we talked about a couple weeks ago. Um, when you look at, you know, Coach Powell taking over this program, um, obviously... You know, you look at Stony Creek, the last three to the last five years have been a playoff team. Um, so when you look at Coach Powell stepping in, um, you know, he's, I mean, Stony Creek did not make the playoffs last season, really struggled in the red. Um, now they moved up, they moved down to the white. So it's going to be interesting to see how, um, you know, how things do go over there at Stony Creek with life being in, the, in a new division. Um, in the white, and you know, and I think you, you know when you look at Powell, obviously a Warren Cousin alum. Um, he was at New Baltimore Anchor Bay with his father, um, and then he came to Lake Orion. I mean, he is a math teacher at Lake Orion High School. Um, he's done a wonderful job as a defensive coordinator. Um, took over the role in 2018, uh, 2019, um, leading that draft under um. Under Coach John Blackstock, leading that Dragon team to a um, eight and one record, um, unfortunately losing the district final to Utica Eisenhower. Um, 2020, 2021, you know, kind of a setback defensively. 2022 was also a bit of a struggle, um, and then this year um, the um, defense had a nice year. Um, the only exception, I'm, and I'm not putting. Uh, was that thirty? Um, was that thirty-eight, thirty-seven? Um, debacle against Clarkson, where I thought that was terribly fishy in that game. But, but for Coach Powell, um, you know, this was an opportunity for him to take a um, coaching gig. I know Coach Lake Orion coach Chris Bell said a lot of high praises about Coach Powell, especially the job he did defensively. Um, particularly one game I do remember very well was when they played Adams, where they um shut Adams out thirty-five nothing. Um, that's not an easy thing to do with that defense. Um, holding a team to, to nothing, virtually nothing in that game. And I and Coach Powell had a really great game plan. Um, defense, I'm getting a touchdown in that game. Um, they did a really good job in that one. Um, and I know Coach Chris Bell has said a lot of high praise about Coach Powell. Um, defensively, they've had a lot of good games where they played really well despite the points given up. Um, but when you look at, um, you know, and, and he believed that Coach Powell was ready for the job. And, you know, and obviously Stony Creek came calling and, you know, and um, look at where, and, and then here we are now. So, you know, when you look at Coach Powell, his resume, obviously a lot of people are going to know around here as the Lake Orion defensive coordinator. Um and he did a really nice job with his defense. Um, obviously, learning obviously a lot of people learned four two five. He went more multiple the last two years under Coach Chris Bell. Um, you know he's had some great games. I mean, like obviously you know, and then um, you know. So when you look at an opportunity for Coach Powell to run his own program, this is the perfect opportunity here. So when you look at where Stony Creek's at right now. And I think when you look at the word retooling a little bit, I don't necessarily look at the word rebuilding considering the success of the sub varsity programs. Um, Coach Powell is also going to have a really nice feeder system over um, with the youth levels at Stony Creek. Um, of course, there's Stony Creek um, youth football 
also the middle schools, especially at Hart Middle School. Um, and then also some, some of the kids have come from Ruther. Um, so when you look at, when you look at, um, and then of course you have that freshman junior varsity programs, both of them been really successful. Um, so when you really look at Stony Creek, um, I'll be curious to see what type of transition period is going to be over there because you look at the defensive side of the football, Stony Creek was a team that ran a lot of four, four, um, they ran, they ran some three, four. I expect them to be more of a multiple set when it comes defensively. Um, and then on the offensive side is going to probably be where I think is going to be the interesting part. Um, will coach Powell keep some of what coach Merlo did? You know, obviously with the traditions that Stony Creek did. I mean, like, will he keep that? That's the, that's another question that will be interesting to see as, you know, so when you look at the offensive side of the football, you know, coach Powell has learned a lot on this side of the football. I mean, obviously you look at, you know, a team that runs, you know, obviously he's learned the, um, the um, jet offense under Chris, under coach Chris Bell. Um, he's re- learned the wing T offense, of course, under his father. Um, obviously, you know, the power, the power game, obviously, um, and the spread looks obviously. So I'm very curious to see what offense coach Powell is going to run at Stony. Um, now that this is going to be his program and, you know, what, what's going to be his model? I mean, like, obviously that's going to be the most interesting, um, question for coach Powell. And, you know, you got to look at the kid's mentality. I mean, how is their mindset going to be? I mean, you look at what coach Merlo did, you know, when he took over at Stony for, um, coach Bob Lancey, he rebuilt the weight, the conditioning program there. He, um, he rebuilt, I mean, he did a lot of things. He rebuilt the, he rebuilt, the Stony Creek football program in his own image, the armor up culture, um, <coughs> leading into the playoffs the last three years. I mean, I mean, three, three of the last five years. I mean, like you really look at the success that, you know, Stony Creek's had, you know, you look at, of course, yeah, Brad zuby has been really good over there. Um, but then he left to go to Ortonville Brandon. And then obviously the, um, the rough couple of years under coach Bob Lancey. And then, Obvious success under Coach Nick Merlo. Now Merlo did have a losing record, which was, I think it was twenty five and twenty six at Stony. Um, so that was a really interesting stat line when I looked at it. You know, um, so when I look at and but you know the twenty five wins at Stony, that says a lot right there. You know what I mean? Especially when you look at you're in a school district with. Rochester and Rochester Adams, of course, Adams, we know has had a lot of success, um, of course, winning a state championship um, and getting to a state championship game um, under coach Tony Petrito. Um, and then Rochester, we know the success and the grit that they have under coach Eric Vernon. So when you really look at um, Stony Creek, you know what I mean? Like a lot of, they have their own tradition there. They have a, you know, they have their own, um, you know, how they like to operate and do things. So when you look at Powell coming in there, you got to look at the sub varsity programs. The freshman program had a really nice year. They had a great year. And the JV was not bad. I mean, the JV program was not bad. Um, so there are some pieces to work with for Coach Powell. The question's going to be is, how's the offense going to look? How's the defense going to look? You know, how's your special team's going to look? And you're going to be in a division with the defending Division One state champions in Southfield Arts and Tech. Now, a and is going to have a whole new coaching staff. Um, I mean, like, they're going to go through their own um, transition period. But then there is two teams in that division, which I think is going to be, you know, I really look at heading into the year that Coach Powell is going to have to deal with. And that is Groves. Obviously, Groves returns a lot of talent from a year from 
this year, of course, Groves really underperformed this year. Um, losing to Stony Creek, and actually losing to um Seahome twice. Um, and and then of course there's the defending Division Four state champion Harper Woods in there. And when you look at the Pioneers, they have the quarterback. They have a returning quarterback coming back. You have a returning running back coming back, and a proven wide receiver coming back. So that kind of tells you where. You know, this, where, um, how the White's going to look, obviously. So, Coach Powell's going to have his hands full with, um, Stony Creek. And, <laughs> you know, obviously when you look at transition periods, it's got to happen during the season. I mean, you know, obviously when you look at smooth transitions, um, you know, you kind of look at, of course, the, um, transition. I mean, like, um, you know, everybody's got to go through it. You know what I mean? Even, you know, you look at, as, as successful programs. You look at Oxford when Coach Jack Line took over for Coach Bud Riley, there had to be a transition period and it had to happen during the year. Um, you look at, of course, um, you know, Coach um, from Chris Bell to John Blackstock, you know, and then John Blackstock to Chris Bell. I mean, it's had a, the transition period has to happen. It has to happen during the year. It, I mean, like, transition periods have to happen. And Stony Creek's going to have to go through that. Um, you know, and unfortunately, Fortunately for them, it's going to have to happen during the year, during the season. So, you know, so with Coach Powell coming in there, it's a, um, I'll be very curious to see how he is um, received over there at Stony Creek. I'll be curious to see what type of program he's going to bring over there to Stony Creek. I'll be curious to see what type of, you know, what type of, um, you know, how he's going to build that program over there at Stony Creek, and will he be able to, you know, build success early in year one, you know, because when you look at this team, Stony Creek last year, I mean, they were, they were semi-young a year ago, playing in a really tough division in the red, um, now the opportunity for them to go to the white, um, you're still gonna have to play Adams, um, and then you have Rochester in your division now. Um, so when you really look at, you know, the situation that Coach Powell is walking into, you know, you kind of say to yourself, is he ready for this? I know a lot of coaches say he is, but it's going to be interesting to see how this, the summer is going to be the key, I think, for Coach Powell. Because, and obviously when you're building a program and you're building in your own image, you know, you tend to like, you know, you kind of want to keep, you know, you want to make sure everybody's, you know, I mean, the, the, um, everything's in line, everything's in check. And I think that's going to be the question mark that I'm going to have with Stony Creek this year is going to be is can they, you know, especially with the transition period, can Coach Powell get this team to where they need to be? And obviously, when you look at Stony Creek, you got to look at, of course, winning your city rivalry games. You got to look at, you know, with them. Obviously, knocking off Rochester and then especially knocking off Rochester Adams. That's going to be a tall order. Um, and then, of course, competing for division championships. Obviously, you know, you're going to have a tough division this year when you look at teams like Groves and Harper Woods in there. I mean, Harper Woods, I think I, when I look at Harper Woods right now, you know, from a football standpoint, I think right now, if I had to do my early rankings right now, I would have to rank Harper Woods probably my top team right now because of who they got back. I mean, anytime we turn to quarterback, you have a running back coming back, you have a poor wide receiver coming back. I mean, defense is still a question for Coach Rob Oden, but, you know, but Harper Woods, they always find ways to retool. They always find ways. And, you know, and I think, and, I, and when you look at the Pioneers this year, you know, heading in, heading in the fall, I think Harper Woods is going to be the team to beat. Um, and I think they're going to be a very good team this year. I really think they're going to be very good. So that's my take on, you know, so Coach Powell's going to have his hands full. I mean, he's going to really have his hands full building this program, you know, into what he envisions. So when you look at the challenges going forward is, can he build the program that he wants at Stony Creek? Can he, you know, obviously 
get through with the players? Can he get and say, well, look, you know what I mean? Make the players buy into his vision. Um, I mean, like, and then obviously, you know, the parent situation over there. So, so when you really look at, at coach, the hire here, I like the hire of coach Powell at Stoney for a couple reasons. One, you know, you know, he's going to bring something different. He's going to bring something that is different. Um, you know, he's a defense. He, he's been on both sides of football. Obviously, um, you know, learning from his dad on the offensive side of the ball. Also learning for Coach Chris Bell on the offensive side of the ball. Um, and then on the defensive side, you know, learning, of course, you know, I'm being a defensive coordinator under Coach John Blackstock and under Coach Chris Bell. So he knows both sides of football. And we know Stony Creek's got athletes. I mean, obviously, I think for him, for Coach Powell, He's got to make sure he develops a relationship with the youth program levels down there, down, I mean, the youth levels. And then he's got to develop a, a relationship with, um, with the middle school coaches, especially at Hart and Ruther, because that's where the talent level in the middle school ranks is going to be, is over at Ruther and especially at Hart, because Hart is right next door to Stony Creek. So... There's a lot, you know what I mean, that Coach Powell's gonna have to gonna have to gonna have to deal with, you know, especially, you know, in building this team, building his image, building this program. Um, you know, I mean, like, does he keep some of the armor up culture that was held over there? Or they're gonna do or are they gonna do something different? So really that's gonna be the interesting part for Stony Creek is can they, you know, develop that success, you know, obviously, because you know they're going to have to go through a transition period. And unfortunately for Stoney, that transition period has to happen during the season. So, you know, so when you look at the division, as we mentioned, I mean, Harper Woods and Groves are the two top teams in that division. But Stoney Creek coming down from the red helps. Obviously, Coach Powell brings a lot of experience from the red as well being in the red as the defensive coordinator at Lake Orion. So, you know, so it'll be very interesting to see how this transition process goes over there at Stony Creek. So a lot to really look at, you know, with the Cougars, especially for the players and the coaches. They got to get to know one another, um, build relationships, build trust. Um, and I think that's going to be the key I think this, um, especially heading to the spring and also the summer, um, that's going to be the most interesting to see how Coach Powell does with his own program. It is his program now over there at Stony Creek. So a lot to look at here. Keep a really close eye on. Um, but for Stony Creek right now, having Coach Powell in there, um, I think it'll be, it's, it's a good hire. I mean, like, the question for me is going to be is can he – you know, produce the same results that he did at Lake Orion on the defensive side of the ball, bring his magic to Stony Creek. Um, obviously, when you look at the schedule, I mean, their non-conference is absolutely brutal. I mean, they got to play Lake Orion, um, which in week two, that's going to be a really interesting matchup uh, between, um, you know, when Lake Orion goes down, goes to Stony Creek um, and takes on a, um, a Cougars team who is... Um, you know, reloading a little bit. So really, you know, retooling as I call it over there. I mean, like, so it'll be really interesting to see how Coach Powell handles the program at Stoney, but it's also going to be very interesting to see how the players handle Coach Powell. So it's going to be interesting to see, I mean, like, you know, how things work out over there at Stoney. Um, obviously, we're going to have Coach Powell on the, um, on the podcast doing call-ins, um, you know, during the summer. So we'll... um see the process how Stony Creek is going to be um this off season um this summer. So we're gonna talk to um when we do our um traditional talking to football coaches um during the um summer months here on the podcast. So really, you know, when you look at the when you look at it here for 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 um and then on Lake Orient side, you know, you're losing a defensive coordinator like Coach Powell. Uh, it's a it's a tough loss. It's a big loss, but you got to be happy for him. You know what I mean? Like 
he's living his he's living his dream being a varsity coach and varsity football coach, and he is now the head guy at Sony Creek. Um, knowing Coach Chris Bell, he will have something um, in mind, obviously with the, with the defensive coordinator um, position over there. So when you look at Lake Orion, you just got to say in Bell you trust. So you know, obviously when you look at the Dragons, um, you know they'll find somebody. Um, the coach and the defensive coordinator, coordinator role. So, been hearing a lot of a lot of names, you know, a lot of names over there at Lake Orion uh, to be the new defensive coordinator. Um, Russ Purdy's been a name mentioned. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where where Coach Chris Bell goes um, with his um, with his search as a new defensive coordinator. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so that's my take on Coach Powell. He is the new head coach at Stony Creek. Um, taking over the gig for um, Coach Nick Merlo, who is now the new offensive coordinator at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. So it'll be interesting to see what happens over there with the Stony Creek program. So we'll see what happens over there. All right, now let's go from let's go from football. Let's go to basketball now. Um, we go, let's go boys first because there's a lot of storylines here. One team in particular I got to talk about. Um, you know. You look at Clarkston, and Clarkston's a team we know has been dominant under Coach Dan, under legendary Coach Dan Fife. Um, you know, and then Fife retired, um, and Tim Wasilik took over the program in 2019. And and you know, Clarkson, you knew Clarkson was gonna take a little bit of a step back. Um, obviously, you know, especially after the um winning the back-to-back -back state championships in Division One, But, you know, you know, you got to look at what teams is, you know, sometimes teams, you know what I mean, they have great years, but then they struggle in the postseason. And you look at Clarkston right now with the way that that team is, the way that program's been, I mean, they've been very consistent. But when you look at this season, this season, Clarkston started out strong. I mean, they started. Out, they were six and two at one point. They lost six in a row, which is mind-boggling. It is unheard of to see a Clarkson team that's six and eight right now. It's unheard of. I mean, you got to, and then you look at the game Friday night when Clarkson played North Farmington, and albeit, yeah, North Farmington's good. I mean, like, yeah, albeit they're good. They're very good this year. But for them to lose 61 to 34, that's unbelievable. I mean, like, I watched that game on film and I was just shocked with how North Farmington got to Clarkston early and often. I mean, yes, Clarkston came off a really difficult loss to Adams, where that game went back and forth. Um and, but I've noticed the trend with Clarkston where their problem's been. And it's the three ball. It is the three ball. They don't guard the three pretty well. They don't guard it very well. And I know that's got to make Coach Tim Wasilic nuts. I mean, the North Farmington game, perfect example. They did not guard the three very well. I mean, and then when they tried to guard the three, they just gave up the dribble drive. So... You know, when you look at Clarkston, you know, and then also they have issues against teams that press them. They, I mean, like, perfect example there, West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield pressured them like crazy. And they couldn't get it, they couldn't get it to the um, half court line. And West Bloomfield, I think they scored at least eight straight points off, off their full court press. And that was mind-boggling in its own right. Because you always look at Clarkson because they're so fundamentally sound. And for them to struggle like this, it's just shocking to see. Um, now, albeit to Clarkson's defense, this is a very young basketball team. I mean, John Call's only a junior. I mean, you got some proven playmakers on that team. I mean, Peyton Fitzsimmons, obviously, um, first year starting as a senior. Um, Quinn Rosenberg's, I mean, he's had, um, you know, he's had some moments that he looked really good. Um, I mean, 
I know they bring a young freshman off the bench. Um, he's had a nice year. But this team, this is a very young basketball team. And you're playing in the red, which is one of the toughest divisions in the state of Michigan. You're going against North. Now, to Clarkson's defense, the red has gotten better. And honestly, when you look at Ferndale, obviously with Coach Juan Rickman taking over that program, um, you look at, of course, North Farmington. We know what they've been doing. Ferndale, obviously, with the D2 state championship last year. Um, West Bloomfield, we know, has been improving each year. Adams, we know, is a juggernaut, especially a three-point barrage team like they are. Um, and then Groves, you know, Groves, they're struggling right now in this division, but, you know, but they're, but when they get, um, but when they get a win, I mean, like, they're being very competitive in all their games. And then Oak Park, let's not forget, Oak Park's got a win against them. So, when you look at Clarkston and say to yourself, what's going on with this team? I mean, what's going on with the Wolves? I mean, like, you know, there's a lot. You know, there's a lot that's going on with this team. I mean, the three ball, I mean, giving up the three, is that's a problem. Um, defending has been an issue. They can score. But it's the other side of the ball, it's been a problem. I mean, you look at in the game against Troy. I mean, they looked, I mean, like now, I'll be, yeah, Troy's a very good team this year. But, you know, when you look at, you know, this team defensively, this is where their problem is, is on this side of the ball. You know, you know, you look at previous Clarkson teams, they're always sound defensively. Offensively, they're also fundamentally sound. But with this team, this year, it doesn't look like it. And that's the surprise that I have with Coach Tim Wasilek's team is, you know, last season, this team struggled. You know what I mean? They, I think they were 10-10 and 10 last year. Now, they had a nice run the regional final. Um, but obviously, not having, um, not having um, Brody Cozen or Des Stevens, not having those two guys hurt this team. It really does. And for Clarkston, and when you look at that district right now, the facing the MPR, Clarkston's the number two seed in that, which is stunning, behind Waterford Mott. And then you have Abaddon and Lake Orion are both right behind him. So when you really look at the MPR, it is possible if Clarkson keeps losing, they could be playing on that Monday. And we know Clarkson, we know Clarkston, um, I mean, like, it would be shocking for me, personally, if Clarkson were to be playing on that Monday. It would be shocking. Because you look at, of course, but I also think people in the media expect a lot from Clarkston because of the tradition that they have. I mean, you look at, you know, obviously, beginning of the year, Clarkson, top 10 team in the county um, to start the year. I think a lot of that's tradition. I think a lot of that's their tradition. and. You know, last two years, um, now, albeit Clarkson made the regional final a year ago, um, but they really, you know, during the regular season, they struggled. They really struggled. But they somehow managed to win a district and get to the regional final last year. And then, la and then like, you know, this year, you know, starting off 6-2, and two, coming off big win against Fenton, you know, they also have a win against Lake Orion. But... They've really struggled out the gate. <laughs> I mean, you lose six straight, that's a concern. That is a big concern. Doesn't matter what division you're in. So if you're a Clarkson fan, you're looking at that NPR and saying to yourself, okay, we're fine, we're fine. But, you know, when you look at the situation is right now, you're kind of in a really tough spot. For me, with Clarkson, they've got to at least win maybe I think at least three, four games. And you look at that schedule, there's opportunities there for Clarkson going forward. They got Troy Athens coming up, and then <laughs> you still got to play Ferdinand one more time, albeit that's not going to be on the road. You got Groves coming to Clarkston. You got West Bluebill coming to Clarkston. Um, you got, you've already played Adams twice. You already played North Farms twice. 
So, but there's still opportunities there for Clarkson to make some noise. But also, what's not helping them is Water for Mott's also winning. Mott's won eight straight games. Now, albeit with Mott, they got a tough schedule coming up. They got to play. They got um, Milford still on that schedule. Milford beat them earlier in the year. Um, they just came off a big win against South Lion East. So, but right now, when you look at that district, I mean, you got Avondale staring them, staring them right behind them, and Lake Orion's also right behind them. So, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, but Clarkson right now, <laughs> I got some serious concerns, particularly on the defensive side of the basketball. Um, something just doesn't feel right with that team. It just, something just, something's not adding up. And is it the schedule? Is it the league get there? Is it the red? But something just doesn't feel right with that Clarkson team. It really doesn't. So that's something to really watch for um, is Clarkson. Is, you know, that's a team that really concerns me right now when I look at the way that they're at right now. Um, and then on the team that's going up, let's go from the red to the white, Farmington. Farmington's a team that, you know, they're starting to scare people. I mean, they're starting to scare people right now. I mean, they've only lost one game, I think, in their last five. And that was against um, Troy Athens. And they have a win against Lake Orion, which is huge. Haven't played Harper Woods yet, so we'll know a lot about Farmington um, in a couple days. But Greg Grace has played beautiful basketball for Coach um, Byron Johnson. And you look at, you look at, of course, Farmington, the way that they were early in the year, it was rough for them early. It was really rough. I think the game that turned them their season around was that loss to, um, I think it was that loss. I think it was the, I got to remember, it was, it was in the, um, OA Lakes Valley Challenge. Um, they had a really tough loss and. Ever since then, they started turning it around. And you look at, of course, obviously Greg Grace is the reason why. So when you look, so I looked at the NPR when I did my um, district update. Is Farmington's number two in there, behind North Farmington? Um, you got Lavonia Franklin's behind them, and Lavonia Stevenson's behind them. So when you really look at Farmington, here's a team that, you know, coming into the year, had a lot of turmoil surrounding them, had to go through a coaching change. Byron Johnson's done a really great job with that team. He's done a really great job building that team into his own image. Greg Graves looks comfortable over there now. Um, the Farmington is getting a lot of confidence. Um, I'm telling you, when it comes to postseason, I don't know if I want to see Farmington. I mean, no, albeit they're in a district with North Farmington, and obviously we know how good North Farmington is. Now I'm still surprised how they came off that um, how they lost the other night against Grand Rapids Ottawa Hills, where they were down by 11 at one point, came back, cut it to one, but just couldn't get over that hump and lost 57 51. But you know, but for North Farmington, you know what I mean, having that, having their first loss, you know what I mean, like I think it's gonna help them. I really do because. When you look at, you know what I mean, it's better having a loss, you know, than going undefeated. Because when you're undefeated, you pretty much know what's going to happen. So, for North Farmington to have at least one loss out of the way, um, it'll I think it'll help them. I really do. Um, because it's going to give them a gut check. It'll give them a wake-up call. So, but back to Farmington. Um, this team's been playing really good basketball. I mean, yes, despite the loss of Vony Stevenson, um, Farmington, they're going to be a, they're going to be a tough out for anybody. I mean, they're going to be a really, really tough out for anybody in that district. Now, I'll be at North Farmington's in there, you know, and I talked to Sean Cotter a lot about, you know, I know, you know, he, he's very confident in, um, in North Farmington's abilities. I mean, like, obviously, but I'm telling you, watch out for North Farmington. I think North Farmington's better than they were. Um, the first time they played them, I think it'll be a game, but do I think they match up with North? Probably not. 
but it is what is. Um, another team that, you know, that gives me some concern a little bit. Obviously, um, when I look at this, when I look at this team, I mean, you look at the blue right now. Um, the blue looks like it's going to come down the wire between Avondale, Berkeley, and Oxford. And then Pontiac is your wild card. Here's why I'm saying this. Because when I look at that division right now, Abner's coming off a one-point loss to Pontiac. Pontiac is a dangerous team. They are a very dangerous team. Young, well-coached, under coach Andrew Myers. J.J. Claudio has played really well for this team. So Pontiac's a team that you don't know what you're going to get with them. I mean, you really don't know what you're going to get. I mean, so Pontiac's a team that I think could surprise some people. Avondale, you know with them, they've been battling the consistency bug. They've been battling that. They've been battling that bug. So when I look at Avondale, um, obviously, here's a team that, you know, they got some proven players. Um, Mr. Clayton's been a very good player for them at the guard spot. They got they got a good defensive stopper, and then there's Justin Greer Sykes. So, Coach Jared Thomas has done a really nice job with that team. I mean, they're gaining confidence. Um, coming off that loss against Burke against them, but they did knock off Berkeley by 21, which is just insane. Um, obviously, and then obviously you look, read the article for Coach Scott from MI Preps on Scott Bernstein about Berkeley and. You know, with their height. And so I'm trying to figure out what Coach Joe Sermo's team is. What Berkeley team am I going to get? Am I going to get the team that, you know, that looked really good earlier in the year? The team that beat Troy in overtime? Or am I going to get the team that didn't look very good against Abaddon? I mean, like, that's the question I have for Coach Joe Sermo. Is what Berkeley team am I going to get from them? I mean, they're number two in the NPR in their district if, with Groves um, with Groves in there. I'm surprised about Oak Park not being ranked in there. I think I think a lot of that's the games. They have, they've only played 11 games, um, which is mind-boggling. Uh, I know Oak Park's got to make up a couple games, obviously, so we'll see what happens with them. Um, and then, of course, you have Royal Oaks in that district, which... Um, Royal Oak, I, I can't figure this team out because, you know, I mean, they look they look good at times and then they don't look good at times. It just comes down to shooting with them. It just really does. Um, so for Coach Aaron Smith, it's going to come down to that is shooting, obviously. Um, obviously, when you look at, um, you know, so that's another team that I think could um, – you know, really watch is Berkeley, obviously. So when you look at that division right now in the blue, um, you kind of say, and then there's Oxford, obviously. Oxford, Oxford with them, in the game against Rochester, it wasn't Jake Champagne that went off. I mean, Drew Cady went off. Um, Luke Stolfin in a nice game. For Coach Joe, for Coach Fed, I'll tell you what right now. Oxford needs a Robin to Champagne playing the role of Batman. That's really the discussion point here for um, Oxford. Is do they, you know, that's the key. And that's going to be the key for them, especially come postseason time. And I looked at their district and I'm saying to myself, you got three teams in there that could give Oxford problems. And in Grand Blank, obviously, Grand Blank's hot right now, the way that team's been playing. Davison, we know how good that team is. But then there's Holly. Holly, when healthy, is really dangerous. You look at a guy like KB on Smith. You look at Tony Simmons. I mean, they got three-point shooting. Coach D. Dayhart has developed that team over there at Holly. So, we'll see what happens over there. We'll see what happens. Um, Let's go to more. I mean, like, let's go. I'm going to go a little bit more out of, um, out of league here. Um. For a minute here, I'm going to talk a little bit about Waterford Kettering here. Of course, we, um, for football here, of course, Brian Barnes, a good friend of mine, was named new head coach at Waterford Kettering. Um, curious to see how he does over there. Really curious to see how he does over there. So, 
So my thoughts on that, I'd like to hire Coach Barnes over there at, um, at Kettering. So we'll see what happens. I think he'll do a good job there, but he's got a very tough road ahead of him. Can he turn around? Big question mark. So we'll see what happens over there. So that's my, um, that's my um, early take on the Waterford Kettering football, got, football gig. Of course, Kettering is in the Lakes Valley um, Conference. So curious to see if he schedules any OAA opponents. Really curious to see. So we'll see what happens there. Now back to basketball. Um, you know, when you look at, and then of course, um, so when I look at the blue, it's going to come down to is can, um, can, um, you know, it, it's going to come down to Avondale, Berkeley, Oxford, Pontiac out, out as your wild card. Hard for me to trust Stony Creek this year. Hard for me to trust Rochester this year. Ferndale U has been, really been struggling. Um, so we'll see what happens. White, um, obviously, Troy leads the division right now. Troy Athens really hurt themselves at that loss of Lake Orion. Lake Orion, you know, they're gonna have a lot of home games coming up. Um, so you know, WDBC, um, that crew is gonna be busy. Um, you look at, of course, um, Southfield's been struggling, Farmington, we talked about already. Um, Bloomfield Hills has been up and down. Um, so that's my take on the white. I mean, Troy right now is the team in that division. Red, we already talked about. Um, North Farmington, Ferndale, um, Adams, West Bloomfield, um, Clarkston, um, and Grove. So that's my take on the boys' side of things. So, all right, now let's go to girls now. Um, when I look at girls right now, obviously, we know how good West Bloomfield is. We know how good that this team is. And the way West Bloomfield is playing right now, I don't really see anybody challenging them until maybe the state, state finals. Maybe Detroit Renaissance gives them a game. I don't know. But that team is a juggernaut. Stony Creek is an undefeated team right now. I think that changes after this week because they play West Bloomfield. Obviously, you have Sarah LaPrairie. You have Merrick Schlaubach. You have, um, you have Izzy Avage. Um, three very talented players. They've done really well. They've done really well. Um, they win their 11th game. They're going to be at least guaranteed be above 500. So... When I look at Sony Creek, this is a scary team. Really scary team. Um, Lake Orion, they just got to stop turning the ball over. And, you know, I think this team's fine. I think Lake Orion's fine. Um, the problem I have with this team is, you know, they just turn it over too much. They turn it over a lot. And sometimes decision making's very questionable. But they have managed to put you know, win three of the four quarters, you know, in each of their losses against Clarkson and Rochester. But, you know, for Coach Bob Bridges is putting four quarters together. That's really the key. If they do, this team's fine. I'm not pressing the panic button yet on Lake Orion. I don't think anybody should. I mean, they, they got to get some things fixed. It's clear as day. Clarkson coming up at loss to West Bloomfield. Um... You know, when I look at the Wolves, um, I think with them, it's going to come down to, I think they're a different team on the road than they're at home. Um, I mean, like, they're, I mean, traditionally young teams do struggle on the road, and that team is still a very young team. When you look at Eliana Robax, only a sophomore. You look at um, Brooklyn Colbert's a freshman. Um, you know, so curious to see how this team does on the road. I mean, you know, and I think that's going to be the key for Clarkson is they've got to win some games on the road. And I think really, you know, that could be the key for them heading into the, um, you know, heading into the, in the month of February. So we'll see what happens there. Um, and then, you know, we look at Oxford. Oxford has been up and down. I mean, you know, you look at the play of Peyton Richter, you look at Sylvia Robb, Allison Hopsteller, they've been playing really well right now. Um, be curious to see how this game goes against Lake Orion. Really curious to see how that matchup goes. So, 
We'll see. We'll see what happens there. And then there's Rochester. Obviously, the win against Lake Orion is huge for them. Um, Alice Max, um, Kylie Robinson had a nice game. Um, they got some guard play. Um, they finally they got some guard play. Um, which was one of the differences in that game. But I think honestly, when you look at Rochester, for them it comes down to guard play because. If this team struggles guard play, they're in trouble. I mean, they're going to have to win games scoring under 30 points and playing defense. I mean, they did that. And I think they're going to, they got to use their size and link to advantage. And I think they've done a really good job of that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. So that's my take on the red. Um, Let's go to the white here. I mean, the white, when I look at this division and... You look at the way that, you know, I'm the team I've been mostly surprised with has been Seaholm. Seaholm's been, they've got confidence now. Ever since that win against Royal Oak, um, you know, Seaholm's a team that I think could do some damage in this division. Now, people say, well, what about Blue Bay Hills? I mean, Blue Bay Hills, they're coming back from them. They just, they are starting to roll a little bit. Obviously, when you look at the play of the Blackhawks, Ruby Smith has to be the key, and she has been. Brianna Young has really played well in these last couple games. Um, Ashley Fordner has done well. They have a win against Royal Oak, which is huge. I mean, Royal Oak, I thought, coming into the, coming into the year, was the team to beat in that division because of, you know, the experience they have back, the, you know, they have the... Um, you know, they didn't really lose anybody. And then, you know, they coming off that win against Rochester, which was Coach Brian Zapata's, I think, 200th win as coach. Congratulations, Coach Zapata. Um, um, but Royal Oak has really struggled as of late. I mean, I think they're one and two in their last three games, which is very surprising. Um, to say the least, when you look at the Ravens, just the way that that team's been. And... You know, it's hard for me to figure out why they're struggling a little bit. But they are. So, Royal Oak right now, I'm, I'm just trying to figure this team out a little bit. You know, why Royal Oak is struggling a little bit. Groves is struggling um, in this division. But the team that I think, I think a lot of people kind of has really fallen off has been North Farmington. So, when you look at North Farmington, their situation. And... I know that there is some issues over there. I have not seen Anaya Billups' name on the stat sheet. I've heard a lot of rumblings surrounding her. I've also known Hannah Hart is injured. And I know that she's been battling an injury. She hasn't played in the last few games. So North Farmington's a team that really relies a lot on Ashia Jihad. Um, and she's been playing really good for, for Coach Michael Lawlin. The problem with North Farmington is she need if she needs help. And when you look at when you don't have Hannah Hart and when you don't have a Sia Jihad in your lineup, that's going to make things a lot easier for your defense. Um, and it's going to make things and it's going to make things much harder for North Farmington to win games. North Farmington started off the year, I mean, like six and zero. They're one and six in their last seven. They have not been the same team since that Lake Orion game. They really haven't. Um, so when I look at North Farmington, their situation, it's pretty simple where their problems lie. And obviously not having Anaya Billups hurts this team. Um, obviously not having Hannah Hart, who's a captain on that team, hurts. So, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes at North Farmington that's not good right now at the moment. Really isn't. So, when I look at this division right now in the white, right now, I would say Seaholm's the best team in this division. Then it's Bluefield Hills. Then Royal Oak. Um, then Groves. Then Rochester Adams. And then Harper Wood. I'm oh, sorry, not Adams. Well, then... um. I got to get my divisions right here. Then Groves, 
Harper Woods has been a team that's been up and down. Um, had a good win the other night. So Harper Woods, then North Farmington. So that's my take in the division right now. I would say right now is Seaholm, Bloomby Hills, Royal Oak, Groves, Harper Woods, North Farmington. Now let's go to the blue. Um, actually, let's go gold first. I mean, gold, then blue. Um, in the gold, I just don't see anybody touching Ferndale right now. I mean, Ferndale is coming off a really tough loss to Novi. Um, so that's a really tough way for them to lose that one. Um, I really think that the Eagles, um, you know, you really look at um, the Eagles, they're going to be fine. I mean, they got three very young, proven players. Um, Obviously, but when I look at their their district, I'm going like, are you freaking kidding me? When I looked at Detroit Henry Ford, their MPR right now is high. I couldn't believe their district. I just could not believe their district. Because obviously, you know, Detroit Country Day is going to be tough to beat. But I thought my own mind, Ferndale was going to be the number two seed. They're not right now. It's Detroit Henry Ford. But I think Ferndale can overtake them. I really do. Um, considering who they've got coming up, they got a lot of D1 opponents. Whereas Detroit Henry Ford, I don't know, has got a lot of them in the Detroit Public School League. So when you really look at Ferndale, I think there's a good opportunity for them to move up in the NPR with their district. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens there. Um, Pontiac's been up and down. Um, they've really struggled a little bit. Um, so we'll see what happens with them. Um, I've got some concerns with them. Um, and then, of course, Oak Park. They've been up and down lately. They haven't played in a while, which is really interesting to see. Um, they haven't really played a lot. And then, of course, for, but they did get their first win the other night against Ferndale U. So, you know, so we'll see what happens there. And then there's Ferndale U, obviously. Ferndale U is very strong. It's really struggling. I mean... I'm not being mean here to um, Coach Brianna Rowe, but, you know, you got to at least find a way to get, I mean, for this team, I mean, you know, they just got to calm down, play within their system, and they're going to be okay. I, I think they're going to be okay. Um, but they've got to find a way, and I know this is a very young team she's got over there. A lot of them, most of them are freshmen or, or girls that haven't played basketball, and they're in the varsity level. Haven't really seen this much um, experience in a while. I mean, they're it's it's a tough it's a, it's tough <laughs> right now for her. It's really tough right now for her. So I would say to Ferndale U, it's just keep on playing and you'll be all right. Um, so my take in this division here, obviously, you got Ferndale's my top team. Avenue's my number two team. Been up and down lately. Um, Pontiac, I would say my three, my three. Oak Park four. And then um, Ferndale U, my five right now in this division. And then last but not least, the blue division. Um, I got to give it to Diamond Prince. And the reason why I say this is she put up 40 points against Berkeley. Berkeley is a sound defensive team. They are sound defensively. And Diamond Prince burned them for 40. That is shocking, considering, you know, you look at this, that Berk uh, Berkeley held Rochester to 15 points total, and yet Diamond Prince herself put 40 on. That's insane. That is just insane. I mean, I mean, you see, I mean, what Diamond Prince has done or doing her sophomore year is insane. I mean, that says a lot. And this is on a team that has Reagan Zider there, Olivia Sprangler's on there, Carly Higginbottom's there, Ali Mantuz is there, and Troy has started to turn the corner a little bit. They really have. I mean, they started to turn things around over there, and that's going to be scary. That's a scary omen for the division. If Diamond Prince could Diamond Prince could put 40 on anybody. Just imagine if they play Southfield. Southfield, we know, is 
one of the most scary offensive teams in the league. I mean, but Southfield, they're, they're, I don't trust that team defensively one bit. I mean, Troy, they can defend people. I mean, I don't know if I can trust Southfield. On Berkeley's case, I think they're fine. I'm not, I'm not eagerly worried about Berkeley. I'm not eagerly worried about the Bears. I think they're going to be fine. But, but you cannot let them. You can't let Diamond Prince score 40 at your place. You just can't. I mean, I could just imagine. Because they're in a district with Detroit Renaissance. And we know how good that team is. You have Southfield in your district. <laughs> if you're Coach Clay Shaver, you got to shore up your defense. You got to shore it up. I mean, Troy right now, I like the way that team's been playing. They've turned things around a little bit. I mean, they turned it. They turned it around a little bit. Gotta give a shout out to Rusty Zider. I mean, doing their film over there. I mean, like, but I'm telling you, you gotta like what Coach Laura Guzman's doing over there. You got to. Troy Athens. I mean, this team, they're clicking right now, which is a good sign for Coach J.C. Clump. Great sign. Because I'll tell you what right now. I think the Colts are a team that they're scary. Troy's a scary team. Uh, Troy at the scary team. I mean, win healthy, this is a scary team. I mean, I think with Troy Athens, this is a team that's scary. Really is. I mean, Alex Link's been playing well. Um, they got others who've been playing really well for them. I mean, there's a lot to like with Troy Athens. Really is. Um, and then you look at, and then of course there is Rochester Adams. Adams has been, they started to struggle a little bit, which is a concern. That's stunning. I mean, like, I'm a little worried about Adams right now. I'm really out. I mean, I mean, like, they just got to stay positive. They, they just got to stay positive. Coach Joe Marburg is about, is about keeping the spirit's up over there. It really is. And then last but not least, there's Farmington. Farmington's really struggled this year. They really have. I mean, you know, they haven't, they, they haven't been competitive. That's the honesty. They've struggled mightily. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens to them. South Bend Arson Tech, obviously, they're rolling on all cylinders. Um, I still don't trust them defensively. Um, they've got to show me defense. They got to show me what defense looks like. I mean, I've looked at the stats that I look at with them is in their two game, their two losses. I mean, when they were shellacked by West Bloomfield, and they were and they lost to Boney Stevenson. That's really the key, I think, for Coach Shakita Coltrane is can they balance out their offense, their defense. I mean, their offense. With their defense. I mean, that's really the question. Can they balance their defense with their offense? Because offensively, I have no issue with that team. Defensively, another story. So we'll see what happens. So my overall on the blue right now, I would say it would I would say Southfield's my best team in the division. I would have to rank Troy At Troy Athens right now as my number two. Then Troy. Then Berkeley, then Adams, and then Farmington. So really, that's what I'm looking at right now. Now, albeit I don't know if Troy and Troy Athens have. I don't think Troy and Troy Athens haven't played yet, which that should be a really interesting matchup. Considering Troy Athens is a veteran team, Troy we know is a team that's been on the rise. So that should be a very interesting matchup when Troy and Troy Athens play each other. So. We'll see what happens there. But when I look at the division right now, Safford Arts and Tech still is the team to beat. But we'll see. I mean, we will see. All right, man, I'm signing off here. Make sure you follow the blog at saginaw 4650 at .com for the latest information around the OA. Also, we're going to keep an eye on the um, football coaching situation over at Safford Arts and Tech, um, considering where they're going to go with their, um, their um, coaching search. So we'll see what happens going forward. As we head into the um, 
as we head into the beginning of February, which means we're getting really close to the postseason, which means, you know, playoff time starting to come around and 